Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I have 10 flips for you and I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the befores of each of these flips. All of these I got secondhand, and I picked them out because they had really good bones. My goal for the video today is to make sure that all of these flips are very classy as well as timeless. So I'm not trying to go along with any trends here, but they will be something that will last and you'll be able to use them throughout the years without them going out of style. My first flips are going to be the two stools that you saw and they are in really great structural condition. They just needed some help cosmetically. I love finding pieces like that because it saves on time. You don't need a whole lot of tools and you can have a really big impact, a great before and after by just doing the cosmetic changes. Another great thing about these stools is that they are great accent pieces in a room. So you can go with a color that's a little bit more bold. Obviously, you're not going to want to do something that is a very trendy color, but something that's classic, inspired by nature, and that way it'll never go out of style. The color I'm going with on these two stools is a classic green color. The reason I'm choosing green is because, like I said, it is inspired by nature, and it is also a color that is seen historically for over 100 years in home decor. After a quick cleanup on these frames, they're ready for paint. I'm using this color leafy green in Rust-Oleum's two times coverage spray paint. The reason I'm going with spray paint is because right now we are staying with my parents and I do not have any of my paints and tools and, and paint sprayers and things like that since we are getting ready to move across the country. So I'm going to use what I have at my disposal here at my parents house and I like that because I, it gets to show you guys that you can do these DIYs without anything special other than your two hands. You're a lonely sailor, and your soul is made of wind and rain, doubts and blame. I'm a weary pirate, and my heart is made of dust and grain, and spoiled champagne. I've got troubles, I've got sins, I'm my worst enemy, but I've still got a lot to give. So I said, hey, don't you wanna come? Come and run away with me. Hey, won't you come? Won't you come? And I say by chance, don't you want a man? A man who fully understands a sailor's heart. A sailor's heart. The next step is my favorite part of any DIY, which is going shopping for fabrics. I went to Hobby Lobby and saw that they had really amazing upholstery fabrics, but they were a little bit too pricey for me. I'll still show you what they look like. A good hack for upholstery fabric is definitely shopping at Hobby Lobby. Right now, they are already cheaper, most of them, than going to Joann's and getting upholstery fabric there. But also, they have a schedule to where there are weeks that this fabric is half off, and at that point, it is a steal of a deal to get your fabrics from Hobby Lobby. May you always keep your head held up high Pretty little thing You're a diamond in the rough Shining from within I can tell that you're tough Since I didn't find any fabrics in the price range that I was hoping for, I went to Joann's and checked their clearance section and here's a little bit of what I saw. So you make me strong Pretty little thing, you're a diamond in the rough, shining from within. I can tell that you're tough. Ordering a cup of love, feel it rising up and above. You will always keep my heart and soul strong. Plant your seeds and watch them. 
Now it's time to give some extra padding to those seat cushions. I'm just using half inch padding that I got from Walmart. You're the first thing in the morning and the last Baby, you're my future and you are my past Pretty little thing I'm going to clean the seat with some microband just to make sure that there are no odors or any kind of bacteria in there because I will be sealing in this fabric inside the cushion. I like to do that because the fabric becomes a bit of a time capsule. And for people who are like furniture archaeologists, as my friend Emily would say at Reconstructing Emily, um, it's, it's really fun looking back in time and seeing where things came from and all the different styles that have existed. Also, the padding inside there is just going to help make the seat even more comfortable. Padding is very expensive so whenever I can keep it I will. If there was like signs of bug activity or really nasty stains or if it smelled like cigarettes or anything like that then I definitely would have removed everything. But you'll see in a clip coming up soon that they have encapsulated several styles of fabrics on one of these seats and it's really neat looking at the past fabrics because we're going with something kind of similar right now and that is my point that when you use classic things they never go out of style so you'll see that initial fabric that I'll, I'll give you a close-up to see what's underneath some of the fabrics on here that initial fabric is something that would be popular today it's beautiful right now you are seeing me staple on some quilt batting over top of the foam this helps to get rid of any like creases and lines that the foam could create under your fabric it just softens it all up so that the seat is nice and smooth Here is the fabric that I chose from Joann's. It was on clearance and it was only $7 a yard, so I got one yard for $7 that is going to cover both seats. I chose this fabric because it does look like it could be something you'd find in a historic home. When you draw your design inspiration from historic homes and historic decor, it really is something that will stay timeless. When you walk into a historic home, you don't think, wow, that's from the 80s or wow, that's from the 90s or very 70s because those were all very trendy times. When you look into historic homes that were in the early 1900s or even late 1800s, you walk in and your jaw drops because it's gorgeous. Everything in there is beautiful and high quality and well thought out, even though they use tons of different colors. That is why when you draw your design from historic designs like that and historic decor, it'll never go out of style. And with this fabric, I'm getting that same luxe historic look, but on a super small budget. And each of these seats, the fabric was only $3.50. I did have to spend money on the padding and the quilt padding, but I have tons left over for other projects as well. So this is still a very budget-friendly project for anybody that they could do. And you could use a hand stapler, not an electric stapler, um, as long as it's heavy-duty staples that are going to get through the fabric. Here is a close look at that fabric that I was talking about. The fabric underneath is a beautiful greenish color with some gold embroidery in it. And I could easily see that being something that people use today and it would stay timeless forever. Oh, I want you now, now, now. My world is 
spin it round, round, round. And I want you now, and I want you now, and I want you now. Here they are all finished. I wish I could have staged a better <laughs> end picture and video for you guys, but like I was saying, I am staying in my parents' home. There are six of us and then my two parents in their home, so there's just really no space for me to do any real staging and after photos, so please bear with me. Just look at how beautiful these two colors came together, and it's now almost a matching set. Speaking of matching sets, I bought this set of oil paintings off of a online auction and I got the pair of them for under $30. Hand painted for under $30. These kind of pieces of art can be timeless. The frame itself is very like late 70s, early 80s and it has the faux wormwood holes in it and I wanted to mix up a green color that would pull it out the green from the picture as well as kind of a happier green color to paint the frames and to kind of give that classic look to the frames that you would see maybe in a cottage or in a European like historic design and I couldn't find the right green at first and I kept mixing and trying to get a different color green and it was coming out very minty green and that just wasn't going to work for me. The way to get rid of that minty tint is to add red to the paint so you'll see me do that in order to kind of mute out the blue that's in there and make it a bit of a more sage green color i also add quite a bit of yellow and chartreuse in there because i added a little too much red and it was starting to become a grayish color instead of a sage green and so the yellow just brought that vibrancy back out into the green This is a much better tone of green and I thought that it was a very classic color as well. It's not exactly the green that was in the painting and I didn't want to go exactly with that green because it has quite a bit of a yellowy amber color to it and I don't want to date it to the 70s with that kind of color. So I'm doing something that's a little more classic like I was saying something you might see in a cottage kind of English cottagey. <laughs> And I'm doing this on a super small budget. The pair, again, were at less than $30, and then I'm just using some craft paint that's maybe less than a dollar's worth of paint to make these frames stand out, look a little bit happier, more alive, and uh, something that will draw your eye to the painting. My next project is this little table shelf Thing. I don't know what would you call this <laughs> I'm going to be using it in my new home in my entryway to um, kind of corral things like maybe shoes if you have shoes that you put on to go check the mail or things like that and as well as like set your keys or mail or things like that the first thing I'm gonna do since I do not have sandpaper other than hand sanding I don't have a sander or anything where I am I am going to use shellac to help get rid of that rough texture that is on top of this piece. I've already cleaned it. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I don't usually show me cleaning pieces just because I feel like we all know how to wipe something down. <laughs> but I'm going to use the shellac as well to seal in this stain. This is a mahogany stain. Mahogany stain will always bleed through paint. 
I am going to be going with a dark color on this. I'm using a navy blue in a semi-gloss. Again, I'm using spray paint, one, because my mom had a lot of it that she wants to get rid of, and two, because I don't have my paint sprayer, and it is extremely hot outside, so I could not be spending a ton of time out here hand painting it. This paint is actually extremely durable. I was very impressed with it, especially when you use the semi-gloss finish. Anything that has a lot of gloss to it tends to be more durable. And this is definitely a great quality paint. I love Rust-Oleum spray paint. No, I'm not sponsored. I use it all the time because I personally like it. But this navy blue is a color that is classic. You will see it all through time being used in many different types of decor. And I feel like it's become kind of a neutral in a way. Instead of having black, you can use navy blue, and it's a little bit more of an uplifting, less heavy color than if you were to do black, and you still have a darker accent in the room. Right now, you will see me doing a little bit of hand sanding using some triple zero steel wool. It is like using a fine grit sandpaper. The reason I'm doing that is because it is so hot that when I painted on the shellac and let it dry, when I flipped it, the shellac was a little bit gummy just from the heat outside and it picked up some dust from my drop cloth. So I wanted to make sure to get that out of that um, the top there so that I didn't paint over any dust particles or little pieces of fuzz. And then I just went to town on the spray paint in this direction. I always start my pieces upside down and then flip them and paint them right side up whenever I can. Some pieces you can't do that too. But on this piece I could and the reason I do that is because you get way better coverage and you tend to not miss anything when you do it that way. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. You need to get away. It's time we make a change. Oh, you know, you'll always have me. I'm going to move on to the next piece before showing the finished piece because I'm going to create a little vignette using several of these makeovers together. I got this little basket for $4 at Goodwill. It was a little bit pricey for a basket like this, but I wanted to do a neat uh, Mod Podge look on here. I've been looking for a basket that I could do this on, and this one was the perfect shape for that. So I'm going to be making this into a bit of a chinoiserie looking tray that will go in the bottom of that shelf thing. <laughs> What do you call that piece of furniture? But it'll go in the bottom of there to set my shoes on so that I'm not putting my shoes directly on that piece of furniture. I will always stay with you So put your trust in me We'll work it out, you'll see If we get in a car and drive someplace far Yeah, we could go for a ride For the decoupage on here, I will be using napkins as my medium. And the reason I'm doing that is because napkins are way easier to work with than tissue paper. I bought these on Amazon and I will try and link them in my Amazon store down below in my description box. But it is a, a chinoiserie print and they were really cheap and it's way cheaper than getting wallpaper, that's for sure. And I am definitely not talented enough to hand paint a design like this. So I'm just going to use some Mod Podge. I'm using a type of Mod Podge that is meant for furniture, although other types of Mod Podge are just fine for this. I had to cut the edges of the, uh, the napkins because the pattern had a gap in it and I don't want that gap to show up when I overlap them here on that crease. Yeah, but it was really simple to do and I just lined up the other napkin to match the same pattern as the first napkin. That's something you really want to look for when you're going to use a napkin is, is that napkin going to cover the whole surface and if not, does the pattern repeat? So can you line them up together to repeat that, that pattern? Because sometimes the pattern doesn't repeat.
I'm using a knife to cut out the edge to make sure that I don't tear it um, and pull up the Mod Podge pieces and make sure that my pattern stays down nice and flat. I'm going to move on to the next piece before showing this one again because I'm making them into a little bit of a collection. This mirror belonged to my aunt and uh, she ended up moving into assisted living and a lot of her things would not fit in her space and I wanted to um, keep them and keep using them and help to honor her in that way but I needed to update it a little bit and I wanted to go with a flat white on this mirror because a flat white does modernize the piece so that it's not as dated as it was with that faux finish that it had on it originally. Also the decor style that I'm going with has a bit of a nautical inspiration to it which again can be very timeless and I wanted it to have like a seashell um, look and texture to it and I think I nailed it with this flat white paint. My final piece in this collection is this little pot that I picked up from Goodwill as well and it has a chinoiserie look to it. It was only $6.99 and usually these are quite pricey and it was the perfect addition to the top of that little stand. The mirror, like I was saying, it has such a like nautical seashell quality to it now and also can be very classic and timeless. That navy blue is gorgeous. It's going to look good with everything and then that chinoiserie print really shows next to that navy blue on there. It all gives it a high-end look and these were all things that well, some of them were pretty trashed <laughs> and other things that were just unwanted or unusable in the way that they looked. The next piece I'm going to do is a lamp. Actually I'm going to do two lamps but this is the first of the two lamps. I got this one for $9.99 and it had the shade on it. That is pretty rare at <laughs> Goodwill because Goodwill usually takes the shades off and sells them separately. So I got the lamp plus the shade for only $10. And if you are 55 and older, you actually get discounts on certain days at Goodwill and you can get all of your Goodwill finds for even less. The first color I tried out on this lamp, and I say tried out because I ended up not liking it, was this light blue. I got this chalk paint from Walmart. It was not very good quality. I'm, I'm definitely not gonna buy it again, I don't think. Uh, as you can see while I'm painting, it's just a very see-through paint. It doesn't have very good coverage, and it stuck well enough on there. I wasn't worried about it like not being durable. It just it, it was too see-through. <laughs> I don't want a transparent color blue, and I would have had to do like four coats of paint in order to get any kind of coverage. This was after two coats, and it was still so blotchy. But also, it was just the wrong color for this lamp. So I'm going to go with a Dixie Belle paint in the color Putty and just make it look very classic and timeless in a neutral color that makes it look as though it were velvet or cashmere. The important thing to look for when picking out lamps to do um, paint finishes on is that they have a very classic silhouette to them. So you want them to have a classic shape, a shape that will always be around, it will always look beautiful. You don't want anything super trendy or weirdly angular <laughs> or has like a weird like snakeskin texture on it or anything that would be something that is a trend that is not going to to last the test or stand up to the test of time. And with these two lamps that I chose, this first one has a beautiful vase shape and the second one is you'll see it is a very classic shape that you see all over the place even today when you go to buy new lamps. As long as it has that classic silhouette, once you paint it, it will never go out of style. I'm going to seal my Dixie Belle paint with some wax. This wax is very stinky. It smells like gasoline, <laughs> actually. So when you do it, either do it really quick inside and then let it dry outside or do it all outside because it will stink up whatever area you are using it in. But it is really durable and it gives it a very like a nice sheen that's not shiny. It looks very soft and buttery. Here's the next lamp that I picked up. It came in a group of things that I got from an online auction, which were those two uh, benches that I did in the very beginning of this video. It has a big old spot on it. I don't know how this happens, maybe from like sun exposure or something like that, but it burnt up that brush finish, and so there's no saving that. And when that happens, it's time to paint. And I'm going to do the exact same paint finish that I did on the last lamp and make them to be a sort of matching set 
and do this on a really small budget. I barely used any of this paint to do both of the lamps. It took two coats of the paint and it dried very, very fast and I used hardly any wax. So again, extremely budget friendly. Here are the two lamps together. They are not matching, but they do go together. They have the same feeling, and they are something that you could definitely see in a historic home. Obviously a home that has electricity, not that historic. <laughs> but they look classy, and they look high-end and very expensive, although I barely spent anything to do them. The next piece is this little side table, like magazine holder, and it was very solid wood, very sturdy, and I got this as part of that same auction. It was dirt cheap. I think I spent like less than $10 for that whole group of things. And I'm going to paint this in a white. It already has a crackly finish on it. This happens when it is exposed to extreme heat here in the desert where I live currently. And I thought it would create a cool texture to it. The reason I chose white is because I wanted that texture to show and kind of give it an aged look and white is the most forgiving in that way. I also didn't want to go with a shiny color paint because when you use a more matte finish, it makes it to kind of forgive the areas that are not so perfect. And again, I don't have my power sander or anything that I could do to or use to get rid of that finish and sand it perfectly smooth. It's way too hot to be outside hand sanding this thing for hours and hours. So I'm just going to embrace that texture and that is totally okay and it is something that anybody can do and you can make that texture look intentional in your design. White is always going to be classic. You don't want to have everything white but it's okay to have a piece that is clean and white and um, neutral to kind of blend into the background. And this piece is definitely not a standout piece that I would want everybody to walk in my house and say, wow, look at that tiny little side table where you put your magazine. <laughs> it's just something that is utilitarian, but you want it to look nice as well. Here it is, all finished, just a simple little side table that is now going to find its place in my new home. Here I have it holding my planner. I'll have a link to the planner that I use down below in my description box if you guys are interested in having a planner. This one's like really, really detailed and helps you to set goals and stay on track with all your life goals and things as well. The next piece is going to be this frame. I got the frame for $4.99 and I have a boatload of spray paints to use up before I move. So I'm going to be spray painting this as well. I'm going to use a gold color for this because I wanted it to be like those big chunky gold historic looking frames that you'd see in big mansions of the past. And I will be putting a fabric inside it that makes it look as though it were a painting. The fabric I'm using is a bit of a chinoiserie style fabric as well, but it's in a very nice navy blue color with some other lighter blues in there, which can go with everything. And it has some hydrangeas, florals, birds, things that are inspired by nature, so they tend to stay timeless since it is something found in nature, and nature is never going to go away. <laughs> and I had bought this a long time ago, I believe from Joann's, it is an upholstery grade fabric and I bought a half of a yard. So I saw the fabric, knew I loved it, didn't have a project for it at the time and thought I'll just get enough to cover a chair. That way one day if I find a chair that I want to recover I can use this fabric that I know that I love. Well I never found a chair for it. It just didn't seem right for a chair. The, the pattern on it was too it's like detailed I guess. It didn't look right on a chair. But it does look perfect for creating a faux painting on a wall. And all I do is staple it to this frame. The frame was in really excellent condition structurally, so stapling it on there was nice and strong and sturdy. And then I cut off the excess fabric around the areas that I stapled, and then it is ready to hang. 
I'm sorry I couldn't actually hang it in my new home for this video, but I did set it up so that you guys can see what it looks like now that it's finished. This is the perfect gold. I love it. It's not too gaudy. It's very light and happy and whimsical. If you got this far in the video today, I just want to say thank you so much for supporting my channel. And if you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. And I will see you next time. Bye!